Are you Filipino? How do you get your electric guitar tone? What is music directing and how does it even work at your church? These are some of the most frequent questions that people have asked me and I would love to answer them. It's Jem here and I just want to say thank you so much for tuning into this video and to my channel. If you guys don't know who I am, I'd love to introduce myself to you. My name is Jemwell, but you can call me Jem and I am a session touring musician, a music producer and music director from Sydney, Australia. I've played and produced different kinds of music and toured with different artists ranging from pop to country to rock to all things in between to worship music. And I've toured and recorded with artists such as American Idol finalists Gabby Barrett and Cade Fainer. I've done works with Nigel Hendroff, City Light, Luke Munns, and I've even done social media guitar work stuff with people like Drew Shelley of Switchfoot, Michael W. Smith, Stu G, and quite a few others. I am also a producer for Multitracks.com, creating Line 6 Helix and HX Stomp presets, which are available on Multitracks. Today's video is all about answering some of the questions I have received so far on YouTube. My most frequently asked questions. I've never done anything like this before, so I figured it would be a fun idea to do this. I'd love to share a bit about my process and how I get my guitar tones, talk about my music directing journey and how it works here at my church and in the videos that you guys see. And hopefully that this video will somehow bring inspiration to you and help you find new and creative ways to maybe do what it is that I do. So let's start off with the first question that gets asked quite frequently. Are you Filipino? <laughs> I love this question. Um, yes, I am Filipino. Um, my parents are both born and raised in the Philippines and migrated to Australia in 1991. I am born and raised here in Sydney, Australia, particularly in Western Sydney. I am born and raised here in the good old West, the 27 district. I was born in Nepean Hospital, raised in Quakers Hill and Glen Denning and Blacktown, Mount Druitt, Rudy Hill, Dooneside. If you're from the area, you know. <laughs> Hashtag, if you know, you know. So that's it. So if for all those people commenting in Tagalog and all that stuff, it's just like, sorry dudes, I mean, I can understand Tagalog, I can speak Tagalog just, you know, quite a bit, but I'm not born and raised in the Philippines, so if you were to ask me stuff about, I don't know, how long I lived in the Philippines or, I don't know, where I came from in the Philippines, I can't answer that question because I wasn't born and raised over there. Um, but thank you so much to all the Filipino audiences watching my videos and sharing them. Uh, it's a huge blessing and actually an honor for me to be able to um, somehow inspire Filipinos in the Philippines and even around the world. So that is pretty cool. Now the next question that I've been getting asked recently is, how did I start getting into music directing and how does music directing even help in church and in worship and what is it that I actually do when I music direct when I'm playing on stage? So in, in terms of my music directing journey, I've had two incredible people who have helped inspire and shape my musical journey to help get me to where I am today. The first person is actually my senior high school music teacher, Fatima Diaz. She's the one who took me under her wing and exposed me into the music industry. Um, she's the one who got me my first gig and it was actually to play guitar for Hairspray the Musical. I was in the 11th grade, I was 16 at the time and yeah, she asked me to play this gig uh, which went for a span of a week playing multiple shows um, on a night for this production of Hairspray the Musical and she was the, the conductor of the band, she was the music director, the band leader and she really exposed me to how to really uh, conduct the band, how to direct the band, um, expose me to uh, you know reading sheet music and understanding uh, music terminology in, in that sense. And line, line, two, two. Um, so that kind of kick-started the, the drive that I had to uh, do music as a career, but also uh, interest, the interest in running a band. And the second person who has inspired me in my musical directing journey and who pretty much taught me how to music direct in church and I just watched and observed and applied his knowledge and tweaked it to the teams that I, I get to music direct is none other than Hillsong Worship's lead guitar player and music director Nigel Hendroff. Hey guys, it's Droff here and this is Jem Mankabe. Jem is reducing... reducing. 
You are reducing. <laughs> you are reducing. It's been an absolute privilege over the last seven or eight years of my life to have built an incredible friendship uh, with Nige, and uh, I'm just absolutely humbled that uh, one of my biggest influences on the guitar and also one of the main figures I looked up to when it came to uh, serving God in his church and you know playing on the worship team and helping uh, people worship God is a friend of mine and the relationship started back when I was about 17 I was in my last year of high school and I attended a team night uh, one of Hillsong team nights because my my neighbors one of my neighbors is actually one of the the people who sing on Hillsong's worship team he was like hey man uh, we're having a team night on this Thursday and Nigel is running a guitar workshop you should bring your gear and do stuff like that uh, it'll, he'll, he'll be you know doing a tone workshop so you know grabbed my gear took my car and went to the team night Owen McManus spoke that night and Nigel shared his heart about serving uh, you know with the guitar and helping all of us tweak our rigs and that's where the the relationship started from and ever since then he invited me over to his studio and i would just watch everything he does like pretty much everything that i do uh is has pretty much been by watching and observing nige just not only in music directing at church but even when it comes to music production when it comes to you know effective in running rehearsals and just getting better guitar tone i, I owe a lot of what i do thanks to nige and um I'm, I'm very thankful and blessed to have built that relationship with nige over time and it's been wonderful and nige if you're watching this mate time and time again i said thank you so you're getting a uh, thank you on my uh, <laughs> on my video here on YouTube. And so how does music directing work at church and how did I get started into music directing in terms of the, in church and probably just music in general? Like, I guess when it comes to music directing at my church and how I music direct and how it works uh, wherever I play at in terms of a church context and even beyond the church context because music directing, th these concepts when it comes to music directing can apply in any musical situation you're at. The need for music directing came about when our church started transitioning into using e monitors. Uh, at my church and you know the the culture I grew up in in worship is very uh, is a very free flowing uh, type of worship situation. Like we 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 learn the structure so we can break the structure. And a lot of our communication uh, in the band actually comes from looking at the worship leader throwing up uh, hand signals and also observing what's going on in the room and just feeling where things are in, in the atmosphere, you know, of, of what's going on. So when we started to begin using in is and we didn't have stuff like ambient mics and stuff like that, you know, um, trying to implement communication with the worship leader could be kind of hard. And when we started doing the in things at my church, that was actually during the time when I, I met Nigel and I was just watching him how he started music directing in his church and implemented the talkback mics and you know, we, we did that at our church and it became a huge help because now that we had in his in, we could, uh, someone could watch the worship leader. I mean, not like everyone doesn't watch the worship leader, but it just helps to have um, people be on the same page having a talkback mic and watching what the worship leader signals out so that someone can call it and we're all at the same page. You know, instead of looking at each other and eyeballing or having to yell across the stage in those moments where things go spontaneous and not knowing what to do, having someone there on a microphone um, being able to communicate what's going on is, is such a huge help. So in my church, I do not uh, lead the worship leader and tell the worship leader what to do. I don't tell the congregation what to do as well when it comes to a worship setting. We still implement the same concepts we've done uh, in the past where the worship leader calls the signals. In, in my church, we have, you know, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3. We have chorus. We have bridge. If you want to repeat a section, the worship leader will repeat it like that. If the worship leader calls for an instrumental section, He'll, he or she will point at the band like this and so forth. So usually the worship leader will call something and I will see the worship leader and um, I will call whatever the worship leader calls. So for example, if the worship leader wants to repeat verse 1, I will say, all right, verse 1 repeats. And then I'll count the tempo with the metronome, verse 1 three, four, and we all go back at the same time. So I'm not telling the worship leader what to do. The worship, t the worship leader tells the whole band um, where we are going, and I just help aid that communication. But also I play a part in being some sort of 
a safety net and helping safeguard the worship leader in those moments because uh, being the musical director, you got to understand everyone's parts in the music and in the songs that they're playing. So you as a music director, you got to come extra prepared with yourself, knowing the songs, knowing what keys we're in, um, understanding other musicians' parts from the keys player to the drums to the other guitar player, even um, just just knowing where the structures of the songs are. You are the you are the one who is there to to help the worship leader in um, in, in in whatever vision that they have in the moment um, to help bring it to life. And for example, you know there'll be moments where. Um, the pastor will come up and things will change in the room and then the worship leader initial the worship leader's initial plan was to end the song nice and mellow but then the maybe like the pastor is is in a moment where you know the atmosphere is rising so you got to be able to be quick on your feet and think of how can we end this in, in a strong moment um, yeah so like for example there was a moment where one of our worship leaders uh, wanted to end uh, no other name and you know his his initial hand signal was to drop it down but i said no let's end this song strong so he agreed to that on the fly and we ended the song strong come on we give you praise come on give you praise we end the song guys And it turned out great. Nigel's told told me, and there's multiple videos about this where he explains as a music director in church, you gotta have a plan and be prepared. And you don't just have a plan A, but you have a plan A, you have a plan B, and you have a plan C. So that's pretty much where my concepts of music directing come from. That's how I started getting into music directing, and that is pretty much how uh, I music direct in my church, and pretty much how I implement it into other church situations that I play in, or even in other musical um, situations I'm in. One of the things I like to do is talk with the vocalist or, or the main band leader, or in, in this case, I, I'm now the band leader because, you know, you're designated music director. I, I would just like to talk to the main vocalist and um, talk about, you know, what kind of vibe you're going for for the song. Is the song going you know, more mellow, is it more upbeat, and stuff like that. So you got to help the other musicians um, bring out that sort of vibe that the singer's going for. Um, and yeah, as a music director, you're there to encourage everyone and help everyone bring out their best. Um, in our teams here at church, we're not the most musically talented people. Not everyone here does music professionally. Um, but what we do is we 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 come prepared and we come and we bring our best if it's four chords that we know we're going to bring the best four chords that we know and give it our best and and serve with excellence so yeah that is pretty much uh my role as a music director here at my church and how i got started into music directing now this is going to go into quite a big segment because we're going to talk about how i get my guitar tones and i'd love to share how i get my guitar tones with different guitars and it, i'd love to demonstrate all three of my pedal boards and how i get my tones with my small board with a hx amp, my session board with a hx amp, and my helix floor So thank you so much for watching this video once again and for checking out my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like and subscribe button. And if you want to see more of my music stuff, my social media stuff, look me up at jemmygems underscore or visit my website at www.joeandmagtivatingmusic.com. Anyways, see you next time around and thank you so much once again for getting this channel monetized and reaching more than 1 million views and gaining so many subscribers it really means a lot and i'm thankful to god and i'm thankful for all of you so peace out have an awesome rest of your day or evening wherever you are in the world and see you soon